Breaking moments ago, Vice President Kamala Harris says that she has not yet picked her running mate, as reports say that she's days away from making that announcement. Let's see. She got caught up with on the trail here. Let's watch. Madam Vice President, have you chosen your VP yet? Have you chosen yet? Not yet, she said, uh, as she headed up the stairs. So she was heading off uh, to go to a rally in Atlanta. And the Wall Street Journal reports that Democrats are feeling better about their chances of winning Georgia. And as former President Trump unveils a new campaign ad, he goes after Harris for her handling of the border. Watch a snippet of this. You haven't been to the border. And I haven't been to Europe. I mean, I don't understand the point that you're making. Kamala Harris failed, weak, dangerously liberal. So there's a look at the new Trump ad. Let's bring in Mark Thiessen, former chief speechwriter for President George W. Bush, now an American Enterprise Institute senior fellow, Washington Post columnist and Fox News contributor. Jose Aristimuno, former DNC deputy press secretary and former Obama administration official and former Georgia Republican congressman Doug Collins. Uh, great to have all of you with us. Doug, let me start with you. Uh, you give us you. Your, your take on what has changed in Georgia in the 2024 race with the new ticket Kamala Harris against President Trump. Oh, really? I don't think nothing has because the same issues are still this the Harris uh, Biden administration that have caused the issues in Georgia that most Georgians are feeling right now. I think you're still seeing the polling showing Donald Trump ahead. And immigration, which Donald Trump is now hitting, is even more prevalent here in Georgia, where you had Lincoln Riley, who was killed. You also have just in my home county, just right in the last few weeks, we've been dealing with Maria Perez, who was taken from her home here in Hall County by an illegal immigrant. You know, these issues are not changing, and Harris can say, Vice President Harris can say what she wants, but she's still got to answer for the economy. She's still got to answer for an open border situation, and she has to answer for the failures of this administration, of which she is a part of. Nothing's really changed in Georgia. It's always been tight, but Donald Trump is still ahead in Georgia, and I believe he'll stay there. Okay. Uh, um, Jose, it's interesting. There's a piece in the New York Times that basically says that now Kamala Harris's team is saying that a lot of the opinions that she held as a candidate in uh, 2019, she doesn't really think those things anymore. Um, she hasn't said that, but her staff is saying it. And I think it, it raises the possibility of her being labeled a flip-flopper on some very big issues here. So let's look at some of her um, sound bites from 2018, 2019, when she was running for president. Let's watch this. We've got to critically re-examine ICE, probably think about starting from scratch. I am prepared to get rid of the filibuster to pass a Green New Deal. There's no question I'm in favor of banning fracking. And I actually feel very strongly about this, is that we need to have Medicare for all. Assault weapons right. that are already in circulation, what do you do about those? Well, there are approximately five million, to your point, Craig. We have to have a buyback program, and I support a mandatory buyback program. Okay, so that last thing, uh, now she says she doesn't support a mandatory buyback program. Like, she didn't say that. Her people say that, Jose. How difficult is this going to be for her um, to, to say, you know, why she has changed her opinion on these big issues, if indeed she has? Well, look, it's a great question, Martha. I think, first and foremost, we have to recognize that politicians evolve. Joe Biden has evolved as a candidate, as a president. Trump has flip-flopped or has changed his views uh, when it comes to different issues. But I got to tell you what, there's no question that Kamala Harris is a fresh start for our campaign. She's been able to raise, as you know, over $200 million in less than a week. And here is here's a different take and a recommendation I give uh, Vice President Kamala Harris. If you want to stand up for democracy, if you want to be different, you know what? Talk about what's happening right now in Venezuela, Martha. There is an election that just happened this Sunday where Maduro is staying in power illegally. Democrats and Republicans should talk about what's happening in Venezuela. If we care about democracy, we ought to defend what just happened in Venezuela. If we care about democracy, we ought to call out dictators like Nicolas Maduro. And I think Democrats ought to do, ought to do. I think you know, always, you know, Republicans have stood up to dictators. I think Democrats and Kamala Harris has a great, great important moment right now to stand up for what's happening in Venezuela. There's over a million Venezuelans okay. right now in this country yeah. that if, if, if she gets okay. the Venezuelans, no she kidding. gets Florida, if she gets Florida, she gets <laughs> No the kidding. There's a million Venezuelans in this country she right now. Um, you know, uh, several of them are, are part <laughs> of a growing. gang in New York that like to knock over old ladies <laughs> and steal their purses. Like, so we're across. pretty familiar with what's going on uh, yeah. with the, um, you, yeah. you know, deportation from Venezuela of a lot of uh, criminals to this country. Mark, um, your take on how she, how she navigates this, because we all know, as Jose says, uh, politicians evolve, which means they change their opinion to suit the electorate at the time. 
Yeah, no, it's going to be very hard. First of all, it's very hard to her to be tough on Venezuela when her administration is the one that lifted the sanctions in exchange for this election, which uh, the <laughs> Maduro regime then finally stole. So that's going to be a hard sell, uh, in addition to all the it, illegal it, it uh, like migrants from Venezuela true. coming over here. But no, hold on. Let me speak. Um, she, she's got a big problem, which is that she didn't have a primary. And so because she didn't have a primary, she hasn't been tested. And But the advantage of that is that these centrist Democrats that she is now auditioning for vice president, if they had run against her, they would be the ones who had been quoting, quoting all of these extreme positions and saying she's too extreme to get elected. Why don't you pick a centrist like me? Mm -hmm. So now she's trying to tack to the center and erase her record, and she can't do that because it's not Donald Trump saying these things. It's Kamala Harris saying these things. All those quotes you showed are her in her own words, saying that her policies are more extreme than Joe Biden's. You know, and she's running from being the border czar. That's an admission that the, Bi the Biden border policy is an absolute disaster, because if it was a success, she'd be clamoring to be called the border czar. She'd call it a badge of honor. And if she doesn't want to be the border czar, then explain to us, how would your border policy be different from Mark, Joe Biden's? Would you have, you know which of 100 you know, Trump I mean, policies I, I, That's why I really hope we kept? get some... I, I hope we get some, some meaty debates, and I hope we get several of them, because this is part of the process the American people have a right to see between these two candidates. I want to exactly. play this from uh, Laura Ingram's interview, Doug, with um, former mm -hmm. President Trump last night. Watch this. It was a great debate. It was actually, maybe it was a mistake. Maybe I shouldn't have debated so well because if I didn't, you know, that was the end of him. I would rather run against her than him. I think she's easier than he is because he had a certain. I always felt he it's was Granton Joe. I always felt he was incompetent, but he had a certain base, and no matter how bad he was, people were going to vote for him. She doesn't have that base. Okay, Doug. Um, we, we've seen the polls tighten. Clearly, she's in better territory than Biden was with young voters, Hispanic voters, Black voters. Your thoughts? Yeah, look, I think it's, it's, it's always been tight. But I think also you've had a turn in the media. The media went from pounding Joe Biden for two weeks and pounding it down, and they saw the, the disconnect he had, mm -hmm. to now only doing anything but uplift uh, Vice President Harris. Because and remember, they, they pounded Kamala Harris before that. They said she should be dropped from the ticket. Remember that? Exactly. So, <laughs> yeah, so it's amazing to see here. But look, I think what Donald Trump said, just to emphasize what we've just said here, just that Mark and I said especially, is that she's got to answer for stuff she's never had to answer for before. All right. Thank you very much, Doug Collins, Jose Aristimuno, and Mark Thiessen. Great panel. Thank you, gentlemen. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.